welcome into another episode of Rising to the Occasion. Very excited to have you here with us. We've got a lot to get to when it comes to the NHL. We haven't talked a ton on it this season, really the entirety of the season, just because there's been so much going on. But we're diving into it because it's playoff time. The playoffs start on Saturday, if memory serves me correctly. And there's a lot to get to when we get into the playoffs. Teams have finally been uh, kind of inching their way towards that finish line, getting to the playoffs. And we finally have certain teams clinch the playoffs. And so we can finally talk about it and get to it. And we also have a special guest to bring on. But before we get into it, first got to mention a sponsor of ours, and that is SeatGeek. SeatGeek is amazing. And you all, if you watch this show, you know how much we love SeatGeek. Because if you're a fan of live events, whether it be sports or theater or going to a concert, a comedy show, whatever the case may be, even parking tickets. You can get all of it on SeatGeek. It's so amazing. And SeatGeek makes it so easy with a seamless mobile experience. It allows you to sell and buy tickets in just a couple of taps. But it gets even better because SeatGeek also helps you out and they grade every ticket purchase with their amazing color coding system. Uh, they, they have red, yellow, and green. So you know that the green is showing you the best deals. Uh, if you've used SeatGeek in the past, you know exactly how that works. Uh, if you haven't used SeatGeek, you need to go check them out. You can download the app or go to SeatGeek.com and go check them out. You know exactly where you're sitting. You know exactly how much it's going to cost before checkout. And so you don't have to worry about all these surprise fees. But on top of that, we're getting you an amazing deal because if you use our code R2TO, you'll get yourself $20 off your next purchase at SeatGeek.com or by downloading the SeatGeek app. Go check it out. It's an amazing way to get your tickets. Uh, I don't like to get tickets anywhere else after using SeatGeek. So go check them out, SeatGeek.com or download the SeatGeek app and use that code R2TO for $20 off your next purchase. Let's go ahead and get into it. First, bringing in my co-host for this evening in studio. Jeremy, how are we doing? Doing pretty good. And I'm really excited to finally get back in the touch with the NHL and everything. I know <laughs> you are correct. Stanley Cup playoff start Saturday, mm -hmm. and I am really looking forward to it just because I'm thankful because my Washington Capitals have made it in. Thank you to the Philadelphia Flyers and their bonehead move of pulling their goalie <laughs> when we had no chance and hope, and then all of a sudden we throw a Hail Mary, and I shouldn't say we throw a Hail Mary, Philadelphia threw a Hail Mary, and we got the luck end of the stick, so... I'm going to cut the chit-chat. I know we got a special guest in mind, and it makes me feel really good knowing someone that, that knows a lot about hockey. Nothing against you, Josh. I yeah. know you know a lot about hockey as well, but it's also really fun to get to know somebody that um, – it's kind of like a small world situation just because I know this this individual back from Minnesota State days. But, Josh, I'm going to get the chit-chat and let's get rolling with it. Yeah, she's a former face of the Minnesota State Mavericks, uh, who we know, and then also now working for Herd at Sports, which is how we got to know you. We've got Marissa Voss. You can also check her out on social media. Marissa, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Talking hockey, hanging out with the boys. This is the best, best day, so I'm ready to get into it. Yeah, yeah, we always tease Jeremy a little bit. You know, he's kind of, uh, you know, he's he's fresh, freshly one. getting into into football, maybe the way that I am into baseball. Um, but then whenever it comes to hockey, he's kind of like the hockey guy. You know, he's he, he played hockey growing up. He is surrounded by hockey. He goes and still works for the, the Sioux City Musketeers here. So having you on kind of helps him not be the only hockey. Thank you. Uh, the, the sole <laughs> hockey guy, you know, so. We got, we got a hockey girl on with us now, too. So uh, I guess not our first girl guest, but not, not as often that we, that we get a girl on with us, too, to, to, to talk. But Absolutely. let's go ahead and start off. Let's dive into the Eastern Conference matchups. We're going to start off with the Boston Bruins. They're going to be going against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, and so I do apologize if we have some of these matchups wrong because we were just talking about this beforehand. It seems like this is all locked in. The standings are locked in, it looks but. like. But they, it, it, they aren't really releasing everything on the bracket. I'm just piecing it all together to make common sense of this. We've Bear got us, Boston man. Bruins going against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, this is a fun matchup. Really, a lot of these matchups look like perfect matchups, the way that they, they are set up, the way that teams kind of claw their way into the playoffs. We've seen that with teams like last year with Florida. Uh, and that's kind of what we're seeing this year. So Toronto having, having a, a tough tough go around, having to go against Boston, who – is, is doing pretty good this year. You can't you can't look at the Boston Bruins and just assume that just because they're not as great as they were last season that they're not going to be good again this season. But uh, they're doing great. They're sitting there at 47 and 20 uh, with wins and losses. So they're, they're still looking hot this year. They still look on fire, just not as on fire as they were last year. Uh, unfortunately, the Rangers were a little bit better on the, better than them stealing that that uh, what, what presidential yeah, cup, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, the Rangers pulling that one away, but Boston Bruins still looking good this year going against Toronto who, again, 
didn't have as easy of a, of a way into the playoffs, but they're still up there and, and making their way, uh, you know, and, and looking at both these teams, you know, with the Boston Bruins, we expected them to maybe take a little bit step back, uh, you know, and, and, and seeing what they lost last year and moving into this year. But, you know, you, you still got Brad Marchand, you got Pasta over there. Uh, and, and, and so, you know, they're, they're, they're ultimately stacked over there. And now going against Toronto Maple Leafs, who uh, it, when is the next time that Canada is going to be able to, to win a Stanley Cup? That's always the question every time we get to playoff time. Yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, you look at this year alone for what Toronto has done with your just – I'll say one person, and everyone can probably already agree, Austin Matthews. I mean, yeah. everyone can just ramble and ramble off, Mr. 70. And then there's a lot of people that's going to say he's going to be the next person to go up there in the in the, in the the stability of breaking Wayne Gretzky's record. Yeah. I know, obviously, I know there's a lot of talk about Ovi. Everyone's just going to be saying he's going to be playing until he breaks that record Then the day after he's retiring. No, that's a, that's a paraphrase. <laughs> but, I mean, with what Toronto has done, I mean, you just look at obviously the roster with Matthews, Marner, and Reeves, and just literally just keep listing on and on for what they have for a lineup. It's truly unbelievable and what they've been able to do this entire season. Now, you look on the other side of the things for the Boston Bruins. Obviously, like you said, Bergey, Pasta. I mean, they've been they've been playing really significantly well. Just because, like you mentioned, after last year, just what they obviously endured from the Florida Panthers and Everyone was expecting them to make a comeback and run it back, but unfortunately, it just wasn't what it was for last year. And you were caught too because you, you said Bergy. Bergeron's yeah, not Bergy's there anymore. Not there anymore. Yeah, me. I'm so used to Bergy just in Boston. <laughs> I, I almost said his name too, and I was like, "Wait, wait, stop!" Wait, no, I'm he's glad not, there. not there anymore. Something, but yeah, Bergy's not there anymore. I mean. It, it also goes to show you, like, without Bergey, I mean, that that's another leadership thing that Boston was really, really relying on, just what they were able to do. And now without him there, it's just one of the pieces of the puzzle that's just not there anymore. And, of course, you can obviously see how it is for this year. It's it's hard for a team like Boston with how much momentum that they carry each night in and night out just to adjust and get under this situation. But, Marissa, I mean, for what Toronto and Boston both have been doing able this season, it's just been electric for both of them. Yeah, I think Boston's in a better place than they were last year, if I'm going to be honest with you. Well, because you you were forgetting the one thing in last year, the presidential trophy curse. You yeah. can't tell me that the curse wasn't the reason that they like lost to the Florida Panthers and everything. I was like, they that curse is going to be broken this year, though. Be broken. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Don't <laughs> underestimate the curse. Coming from Minnesota sports fans, the curse is always going to get you year in and year out. But it is crazy because everybody was so – like, there's no way. And that, like, when I watched that last year, I was like, I was blown away. But then I remembered, obviously, like, that it, it was one of those things where it's just going to happen. They're going to they're gonna have the curse and that, that it, it was going to be done. And I think they're almost in a better position this year because now they don't have to deal with that. And a lot of, like, the heavy weights of, like, winning it all and having that on their shoulder. Now, Toronto Maple Leafs, we're also forgetting a really big guy in the Toronto Maple Leafs here. The best fourth liner in the league. Former Minnesota Wild, former hottest guy in the Minnesota Wild, Connor Dewar, people. Connor oh, Dewar, my that's my boy. If everybody knows who follows me, if you don't follow me, um, back in the day when he was on the Minnesota Wild, I dubbed him the hottest guy on the Minnesota Wild. I have two <laughs> of his jerseys. He is my favorite player of all time, and now he got traded to the Toronto Maple Leafs this year. Um, but to add him to the roster, I mean, he hasn't done much, but he's just a really one of those great guys that you can add, and he will always – be that he was the short-handed handed king for the Minnesota Wild. He is a nitty-gritty player. He is body on body. His physicality, this level of play, um, adding him to the roster, and also with like with Ryan Reeves, who also was with the Minnesota Wild as well. Um, Austin Matthews. I think Minnesota Wild, Toronto, very similar because we're both have that drought. We both have that first round exit. You both have that really hard. Both luck basically with Canada. So. Both basically Canada. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Everybody Canada, here in Nebraska then Canada says that. Canada 2.0 as Minnesota. Literally, exactly. So a lot of similarities, <laughs> but I think this is going to be just a great matchup because of the level of play. Like you've got the rat with Brad Marchand. You've got um, a lot of those guys who are just want to make up for what happened last year, and I think they can. But I'm, I'm honestly thinking Maple Leafs will come out with this series. I do. I think they're the more talented team. I think when you have Austin Matthews on your team, there is nothing that you can do. He's hungry. He wants to play, and they just are have a really good squad. It's gonna be close, but I do think Maple Leafs are gonna come out with this. It's going to kill me though to see like Connor Dewar be like, oh yeah, like. I can get out of the first round exit, and this is my first time on the you know on a team that can get out of the playoffs in the first round because you know the Minnesota Wild can never 
ever. The real question ever is, how far do you see it going, though, with this rivalry? Do you think you see like a like a game five situation or a game mm. six situation, or do you think it's going to go all the way to game seven? I don't I'm know. Predicting if five. Yeah, I was going to say I don't think seven, and I I I would say probably five, maybe six. If I, I'm, I'm be thinking honest. more along the lines of six, just because when I look at the rest of the matchups, I think this is the closest in overall talent and how they've done throughout the season two mm-hmm. two teams that are they're both solid teams it wasn't there wasn't really much of a doubt for either of these teams to make the playoffs this year where other teams kind of had a little bit of either that doubt or just super on fire you know there's mm-hmm. there's certain teams like yeah we'll, we'll talk about them the Canucks or the Rangers just on fire um you know and, and just these are these are two teams that I think they've just been solid and they know that they're going to make the playoffs, which means that that's a good place to be in because you can prepare yourself for the future. Where some teams they can make it work the way that you know, like I'm like I brought up a moment ago, the way that the the Panthers clawed their way into the the, the playoffs and then they end up upsetting Boston and it, it, they're they're on fire. They they get on that roll and just mm-hmm. keep on rolling. That that works for some teams, but I think for some teams, it's also good to not be on fire, but not have to work really hard to get there. Just plan for the future. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I I think this is this is definitely one of my favorite matchups when you look at overall just two heads butting uh, and, and seeing how how talented each each side is. Uh, and another guy I think we forgot to bring up, uh, Neilander. Uh, he also plays for oh. For Duh. Toronto right now too. The yeah. other uh, hottest guy in the NHL. Yeah, there you go. There you my go. other big crush. I love him. Have See, my I have two a harder NHL time. crushes on the same team. I, I have a harder time ranking how hot guys are in the in the NHL. So I'm glad you're here to to help. I me. can do that. Don't worry. I'll 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 I'll, I'll carry that burden with me. <laughs> you're that's, hired. That's, that's fine. I'm hired with that. Also, we forgot about Pat Maroon, who got traded. Yeah, yeah, yeah Pat true. Maroon. He's been, well. he's been yes. mm-hmm. See, yeah, which when, was when crazy. I was. When I was younger, uh, I, I was I wanted to become a, a Boston fan, but I'd I'd already kind of been in a little bit invested in the Rangers mainly because my my uncle, and so it was hard for me to stray away. But I wanted to root for the Boston Bruins, and I did quite a bit uh, mainly because the the jersey hanging up behind behind uh, Jeremy there, the Stephen Campfer went over there, and so I was trying to trying to root for, root for uh, Camp for going over. Um, but let's go ahead and move on. The next matchup we've got uh, we've got Florida Panthers. I guess the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, again, another another matchup that I think is really interesting because we see a total reversal when we see the Panthers and what they have this year coming in, clawing their way in last year, uh, coming in as as basically the worst team in the playoffs. They're going to get knocked out by this amazing Boston team, and they end up making it all the way to the finals. Now this year, it seems like they just kept that that going. There was no hangover for them which is absolutely absurd, uh, you know, and, and thinking of all of the guys on their team that and, and the way that they've they've gone throughout this entire season just completely on fire the entire season. There really hasn't been a moment of the season where you've looked at them and thought that there was something lacking. It, it's been one of the best teams in the entire NHL this year, which is absolutely uh, crazy. And then, of course, you've got the, you know, Tampa Bay Lightning who – are used to being higher seed, and and they're they're on the other end of the spectrum now, where they had to get their way in, uh, just barely barely squeezing their way into the playoffs. So you know, I, I look at these two teams. I think that's really interesting. Just the the storyline around that in of itself, just the fact that you've got two teams that are not used to being on this side in recent history. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they're they're usually the other way around, uh, and two teams that are probably probably used to seeing each other in these kind of matchups. But again, the, the roles have now been reversed, or as as Michael Scott would say, now oh, oh how the turntables. Uh, and so you know, just this seeing guy. seeing this, it, it's it's so weird to me to think of of the roles being reversed this way. Um, and, and I think that's what makes this this game so fun, which also to to me makes it feel mo- like it's going to be a close game again, another possibly a game seven in this one, just because of that role reversal. Although I think the Panthers are so hot, I could also see them uh, ending it in five. It wouldn't be surprising. I mean, you look at their roster office with Kachuk and just Mar- – not Marner, but uh, um, I don't know why I'm drawing a blanket of the name now. Um, I have it on the tip of my tongue. Um, <laughs> but, oh, gosh, that's going to drive me nuts until I look it up now, probably later tonight. But, Who are you thinking? Um, uh, <laughs> we can literally, it's going to drive me nuts. But I, can, I think – Cousins? I can think, are you thinking uh, about Cousins? Yes, yes. I can think, like, Duclair um, – Listen, trying to think, what's right their here. what's their goaltender's name right now? Uh, Barkov. 
Yes, Barkov. Yeah, mm-hmm. Alexander so, Barkov. Mm-hmm. I mean, just looking at both, obviously for Florida and tr- and I almost said Toronto, but we're talking about Tampa Bay. You get these T teams and you just get tongue tied. I mean, Tampa Bay has been electric, pun intended. I mean, just for what they were able to do and everything that they got to withstand and fight for, just for the entire situation for what this playoff picture for these two teams have. Are looking at obviously the first things first. You got to figure out how to get past Vasilevsky. Yeah, that's going to be your first dynamite. And then if you can find a way to get past him, then you're going to be on a good roller coaster. Just because if you look at that type of situation, he's just been an unbelievable goalie. Look at back at his highlights, behind the bag, no lookers, and everything that you can physically think of for what this goalie has been able to do in the entire season, yet alone the postseason. He's just been an absolute dynamite character, and obviously there, there's a reason why you always see him in the net. But looking out, obviously for. For forwards, I mean, obviously everyone's going to be talking about Steven Stamkos. Then just the entire time, it's just going to be one of those situations to where if you can catch Tampa Bay clicking, you are going to be in trouble just because their their offensive ability is just so fast and their transitioning ability going back into defense is almost the same situation, second to none. They can literally get a breakout going so fast, and it's truly mesmerizing. But obviously, now talking about Florida a little bit, obviously, everyone's just looking at Kachuk. I mean, you get under those type of situations. It seems like to me, I understand Florida's a good, they're a good hockey team, especially after all the momentum and everything that they did last year. They got to keep that ball rolling. And I mentioned that a long time ago. If, if you have this kind of a caliper and you can keep the ball rolling, you're going to be setting like this for a while. And if you don't think that mindset, you're just going to be down in the gutter and you're just going to be shooting yourself in the foot. But going off for them, it is definitely going to be one of the situations to where you just can't keep puck watching and you actually have to try and find a way to get a, a solid breakout going. And if you get caught up in the neutral zone and you turn that puck over, it's going to be a hard time for the Florida Panthers, Josh. But, I mean, Marissa, I know, obviously, you're a big of a hockey person as I am, which is really mm-hmm. grateful for me. And give me your kind of a rundown for the situation for what we're going to see for Florida against Tampa Bay for this type of game. Yeah, so, I mean, the game – the Florida game. It's Florida team versus Florida team. Yeah. Um, the Florida Panthers, though, obviously, like we said, Nick, we got Maddie Kachuk, who is just relentless, always like loves to fight, just a, like a relentless guy. And then also with Nick Cousins, who is also just their whole rat in itself of like the Bruins with the Cousins. But I think this is a interesting matchup to say the least because i feel like a lot of people are like rooting for florida but i think a lot of people are going to shouldn't like underestimate the lightning and what they have i mean like you said steven stamkos is going to be the one where everyone is going to be looking at but they obviously like now they have matt dumba which also is really crazy to me that like he's on the lightning now which was like like dumba has been everywhere but they you know you have matt dumba and you can always find minnesota wild guys apparently everywhere that aren't the minnesota wild anymore which breaks my heart but i think this matchup is going to be a lot more interesting and a lot more closer than people actually realize um just because the lightning are a little bit underestimated at times and a little people maybe don't think because oh florida's just been in it and they're they're really good but you know, all I'm going to say is Florida is happy that they're not playing the Wild because the last two times this year that the they've played the Minnesota Wild, they lost 6-4 to, in the 19th of January and then 2 nothing on October 12th. So <laughs> Florida's just happy they're not playing the Wild because they, they, would, they would lose that battle every single time. But I think this is going to be a very interesting and well-matched matched up. Um, I think, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to seven games. Yeah, one down. Like I think, yeah. I think it would be. I think it's gonna go to set game seven just because their transitional play, that the way you know goalies and offense and defense, this is a very well matchup series, and I'm really excited. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked if maybe like let, let's say like Florida goes like two nothing lead, and then Tampa Bay comes back and like ties it, and then they go and do that. That's how I feel like maybe this will go and happen is if they maybe win two or X Y Z because. They can do that, but also, like, again, last year, like, the Panthers just annihilated everybody. So maybe they, they are a playoff team. Yeah. You know, well, and, maybe and they just are that – that's who they are. You brought something up, too, that I didn't – I wasn't really thinking, uh, you know, so far ahead into thinking just location-wise, too. It's two Florida teams, so you're not going to have as much home field – or, I guess, home ice advantage uh, as, as you normally would. But on top of that, a lot of times, the way that Florida gets their advantage down at home or where – they have more of a disadvantage 
is how humid it is and all this, you know, how sticky the ice is. Mm -hmm. And they're used to playing on that and teams have to come down there and get used to that. Uh, and so you're not going to have that as much. Now you're just going to have two teams that are swapping back and forth and are just pretty, pretty board. used to that exactly. kind of play. Uh, and so that's, that's another thing too, that I, I think you can, you can probably overlook mm -hmm. with them being in the same state uh, is, you know, home ice advantage, which I think everyone would, would recognize except for me, obviously. Uh, and then, and then you, you just have the, the pure aspect of you don't have that that complete climate change from the north to the south, which, exactly. which I yeah. think helps Florida so many times, both Florida teams. Uh, and so, you know, that's that's one thing to definitely look at for this one. It was Sam Reinhardt who I was trying to think of. Okay, Reinhardt. Oh, that's who you're trying to think of. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't know why it was just like lit. Uh, <laughs> what was I trying to say? Well, and and I, I really like Sergey Bob Bobrovsky too. And at and at net, you know, he's one of those guys that is going to be a star. You know, and, and he's going to to help his team uh, to victory. So I, I think Florida makes it out alive. <clears throat> but I I might be switching over now that I'm thinking of location and everything. I might switch mine over where I'm I'm taking that five game out of it. It's definitely going yeah. six or seven. I think um, seven. Just honestly. because. Yeah, you know, at, I do think seven too. Yeah, yeah, because I, I think I think the Panthers are a good enough team where they could close it out, um, but you're also talking a, a lot more variables into this matchup. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you guys kept on naming off other guys that I forgot or are over on Tampa, and I'm thinking, man, like this is this is a much much better matchup than I'm thinking of. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But absolutely. going over, uh, it's Jeremy's team against my team. Uh, I, I was extremely excited that we weren't, and I just brought this up, I think, before we started recording. I'm, I'm extremely excited that it's not the Penguins making it in, which is actually my brother's team, which is funny enough, as, way, as many BS connections so well. that we've got. But, you know, the, the Penguins are just that that weird team that they've got the Rangers number every single time in the postseason. Either make it way too close, or they end up squeezing out the victory and winning the series. And so I'm just glad that it's not the Penguins this year. But we've got the Caps, which is a, a tough team to go against. Uh, you've, you've got guys like Ovi and, uh, but you know, and, and, and Carlson and so many, so many stacked players really on both sides too. Cause you think of Artemi Panarin uh, and, 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 you know, you've got uh, Keandre Miller, uh, you, you know, you, you've got Goodrow, Kreider uh, trying to think of uh, going down the list. I mean, the Rangers are a stacked roster. We talked about this earlier on in the season, about midway through season, yeah. uh, just how stacked that roster is and thinking of everyone they've got there. I mean, they they let go of some guys. Uh, you know, you think of Tarasenko and and Patrick Kane and and the stars that they are. And then you look, and they've still got guys. Uh, you know, Fox. Uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to think. You're forgetting one important one. I, I know, and and I'm, and I'm trying to think of who it is too. And then there's one that's right on the tip of my tongue that it's I can't think the of. Pipes. But well, yeah, obviously. But but you know, <laughs> you can't and, and forget they, Yeah, and, and Shesterkin. But they've they've always got goalies. Yeah. Uh, so you know, but just Shesterkin. Uh, but just thinking of, of the stacked team over there, um, but then, of course, you've got the Capitals also stacked, you know, TJ Oshie. Um, and then one that you and I were just talking about, I didn't realize Patch. Max Pacioretty, uh, a former Sioux City Musketeer, uh, is over there with the Caps now. And so uh, that, that's it's just crazy when you look at these two teams. And, and it's also crazy to me. This just shows how tough hockey is and trying to find the right lineups um, because there's so much behind that that a lot of people, if, you don't, if you're not a hockey fan, you, you don't understand how difficult uh, it is to get the right guys on the ice together at the right time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you think of penalty kill uh, or, you know, the, the, you know, trying to attack on penalties and just those different special teams and all that. Just there's so much that goes into game planning that you don't realize. And then, uh, you know, just a little while back, we were at a, a Muskies game and some kid behind behind us, he was a basketball player. And so he was like, do you think it's do you think it's as, as difficult playing basketball as it is? Uh, hockey or that it, that it would wear you down or something along those lines and I just kind of chuckled to myself like you've you've obviously never had to go out there and try to ice skate you know full speed you yeah. know that so that, and and you know a lot of people think you're only out there for 60 seconds that's a long time on the ice when you think of all the all the energy that you're putting out you know the balance that you're constantly putting into uh and and the hip movements and and the hitting and there's so much that goes into hockey that you don't realize and so it's it's crazy to me I bring all that up to to say it's crazy to me that a team as talented, you know, when you think of the roster, as the Capitals struggling as much as they are and barely getting in the, into the playoffs. But obviously, you know, they're into the playoffs. They're they're a tough team. Uh, and so this is another one that I think is going to be a really fun matchup. Uh, and maybe that curse is, is going to be there. But I think it's finally the year that we get past the curse. 
Whatever you say, big boy, <laughs> whatever you say. I mean, that curse is definitely going to be staying around. No, but I'm before I go on to talking about this, I'm with what you just said, that just that just grinded my gears about the basketball kid. I mean, yeah. I've had something similar to that when I was. It's, it's really just being naive. I know, you know? <laughs> but still, things like that from a hockey player's perspective that just grinds my gears. I mean, I was I was actually at a Musketeers game, and there was a guy behind me. He was from a college here in town, and he said, "How many quarters are left in this game?" I'm like. <laughs> Mm, dude, that happened I, all the time when we lived in Indiana. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. But, I mean, no, going back to obviously on the main topic, talking about the Rangers going against the Caps, this is definitely going to be one of those situations if you don't have the curse, you better play your game. I mean, for the Washington Capitals situation, like Josh just mentioned, we were lucky enough to make it into this situation. Like I said, shout out to you Philadelphia Flyers for your bonehead move and what <laughs> you guys did. I sincerely thank you enough. I will send you a thank you card and I will send you some flowers. But, I I mean, just going off of the situation, we the the we may have some good players that you listed off, but the one big individual that we are missing is Nicholas Backstrom. For sure. Yeah. I mean, he's just been he's been that backbone in the entire team. Nothing against OV, Oj, Patch. And I mean, these guys have been an unbelievable team, but you also gotta remember the factor that we have one of our main big players out. And I'm not hundred percent sure. I haven't looked at the I haven't looked on NHL.com or anything on social media just to see if there's been any update. I know he's been on the IR for a good amount of time, then it's definitely going to be a rocky situation if we don't get backy back before the playoffs start. But you mentioned it, Josh. This New York Rangers team, they've been electric. And the first thing, like I mentioned, you may have missed a big player, but obviously you can't forget him out. I'm just starking. If you – if you try and get a simple shot off of Sisterkin, it's just going to be nothing but just simple, right in the gut, just down in the glove. You got to find a way to get Sisterkin off of his game, and you got to find that fast, just because with how fast New York is able to transition with Kreider, Fox, uh, Fedotanko, I mean, there's just so many players that can literally, like, we can literally ramble off for what New York's roster is, and they can just make you seem silly. And I mean, nothing against Washington here, but if I was in a Washington jersey, I would be scared just because for what they are able to do this entire season and now winning that trophy, they they got to have a lot of energy going into this playoff caliber, and they think that they're going to steamroll over the Washington Capitals. But obviously for Washington, we obviously have that number eight guy that you will never stop hearing about, Alexander Ovechkin. I am so thankful for him and what he's able to do for the Washington Capitals. I know he's not one of those nitty gritty down to earth I'm not down to earth but down to dirty players but Ovi is definitely one of those guys to where you find him in that circle yeah you might as well just go ahead and light the lamp right now and the puck hasn't even let this stick but Marissa this is definitely going to be a tight series I sincerely think but I'm done ranting. Let's hear what you got to say. <laughs> That's real. That was beautiful. Like, listen, and I Thank will you. say, like, playoff hockey is at its peak when Alex Alexander Ovechkin is in the playoffs. It really is. It makes oh, yeah. it all beautiful when we have Ovi back there. They missed, obviously, last year. Now they're back at it. But this is actually the 10th time the Rangers and the Capitals have played in the playoffs. So first time since 2015. So really kind of igniting a good rivalry, in my opinion. But um, New York has prevailed five times out of the previous nine in that series. So it is kind of going towards New York Rangers' hand a little bit. And I think that you guys think it might be close. And I know it's hard to be that middle ground right here because we got a Caps fan and a Rangers fan. I didn't say fan. I think it'd be close. I said it'd be a good matchup. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I also I also don't know if it's going to be close. I think the Rangers are that, just that good. Now, will it be a Boston Bruins thing like last year where we have the presidential trophy or maybe there's too much going on? I don't think so. I think the Rangers have played their, their identity all year long. I think they have been that team. They are as good as they are and it's just one of those one of those squads where you're going against a team who just barely made it into the playoffs has been, you know, they've been there. They've done what they've done, but when you're going up against a powerhouse, like the Rangers, I do think it's going to be hard. I don't know. I think I'd be shocked if it went to game five, five games, to be honest with you, I would a little bit, but I also know this is playoff hockey. Anything can happen. And who knows that like, obviously we saw the Florida Panthers last year and that could happen to the same thing where all of a sudden the captures come out of nowhere. Um, OV in the playoffs is OV and he is always going to light the lamp and he's going to be electric. So you can also take into that. Um, and also maybe the Capitals are a little bit underestimated. Maybe that the Rangers think that there is also a level of play where 
you have a team that thinks they're so in the bag, thinks they're going to win. It's 100%. And then they underestimate their opponent. And that's when hockey gets great and is a little bit tricky because you can never underestimate. It is quite literally the full season. The regular season is done. This is a fresh slate, new ice, Zamboni getting on. So I think it'll be fun matchup. I do think the Rangers are going to get this, but I also – Maybe the like Caps could come back and just say, you know what, every under everybody else underestimated us, and here we are, and we're shocking the world. So I hope Tom Wilson's not listening to this because he can probably <laughs> give an earful. Yeah, this this is a this is a Rangers team too that you're going to have to keep up with when it comes to scoring, uh, and then obviously you look at the the defense. The defense isn't lacking either. So yeah, I definitely look at this Rangers team. I, I haven't felt this confident. And, and a Rangers mm-hmm. team, although like you guys brought up, I know the curse is there. I'm trying yeah. to push it off and pretend it's like not there. It's still but this there. Th- this is the most confident I have ever been since really following the mm-hmm. Rangers really closely, uh, especially in my my adult years uh, where I, I understand the sport a lot more. Uh, and so you know, it's it's definitely the most confident I've been in this team. It is it's a, a very tough team, and no offense to the Capitals. But that was the matchup that I was hoping to see out of mm-hmm. out of the Flyers, Penguins, and, and Capitals. I was kind of pulling a little bit because Jeremy and I can sit there and have a little bit of banter on the on the show and even behind the scenes. We might just have to live but, stream the game and have. Yo, two you, you guys us. should. Yeah, yeah, you maybe we will. Should. Maybe we'll, we maybe we'll like pull a that up. Moment. But uh, yeah, I mean, just just looking looking at that matchup, it's it's going to be really fun. Uh, I think we might have a fr- frozen camera. But, oh, <laughs> I was gonna say I heard something snap. Yeah, I think it's your respect <laughs> yep. there. But, oh, oh, but, oh no! There <laughs> is there is a tidbit I need to say. This is an interesting yeah. stat. So um, I'm looking at a website right now, and like just like this is what I do during show. So New York has prevailed in the five of the previous nine series, including the past three: 2015, 2013, and then 2012. But all of those games went to seven. Really. All of the series went like they all went to seven. So, so if the Rangers win, you're thinking they're going to have to win in Game Seven. Well, that's like that's just an interesting fact of the matter. Is like they've yeah. all played. Oh, we're out. <laughs> he's, he's getting a fix there. <laughs> he's getting a fix. But like they've all been to seven games. So yeah. potentially again, like what if that's just history, like repeating itself, and these go to Game Seven? I think that's just an interesting stat. Like, yeah, that is, and, and I love I love those it, stats but. too. I love those mm-hmm. stats. Those are always always really fun to look at. Um, let's go ahead and jump on to the next one while Jeremy's fixing a camera over here. Mm-hmm. He, he has a hard time with the batteries too. So, <laughs> but, <laughs> but let's, let's jump on to the next, next matchup we've got on the list. Uh, we've got the Carolina, uh, hurricanes, uh, against, I want to say Carolina Panthers. My brain goes there for some reason. We got the Carolina hurricanes against the New York Islanders. Uh, the other New York team who I, I honestly forget about, um, but they're there. Uh, they, they end up making their way here um there we go we got the camera working now we just need the co-host back in the seat but it's a funny thing it always happens when you're talking about the washington capitals like it's a new york rangers guy that's that's <laughs> kind of an ironic story that's kind of like I think interesting you like, i wonder why that damage. happens huh. huh can't make this stuff up ladies and gentlemen. interesting Maybe we just needed him off the off the screen, but C-A-P-S, caps caps <laughs> caps baby. But we got the the New York Islanders Hurricanes. Uh, this is this is one of those matchups where I, I feel like the matchup is is set really well, and it, it's two of those teams that I don't see them going very far. Uh, I I don't have high expectations for either of these teams. Whoever makes it out of this one, I feel like they're going to they're going to come to a stop in the second round. Whoever they end up going against, uh, I just. I don't know. I I'm, I don't I don't have high expectations out of either of these two teams. I don't see either, either of them making making it all the way. But that being said, you also have a possibility of seeing a dark horse in this matchup. And you know, you, you think of guys, uh, you know, with the Hurricanes, you're getting getting Sebastian Ajo, uh, Jordan Stahl, who's been a legend in the game, and and will go down as one. Uh, and you know, it, it, over on the other side, you know, you got Anders Lee. Um, uh, trying to think of who else. Over there for uh, the the Islanders, you've got uh, Pelic. Um, I, I should have should have written down Rock, all, all the names. Rock Nelson. There you go. Um, yeah. So I mean, just Barzell, Yeah. You, you've got a, you've got a really fun matchup between the two. So I think this matchup is going to be one to watch. This is one of those that I definitely see just because of how close it is. You've got two teams that are kind of equal uh, and, and a perfect matchup when you put them into a playoff situation. 
Uh, and it ju- and that's that's the thing too. It's not like college football where you've got a committee uh, picking it, or college basketball where you got a committee picking it to put them in there. That's just where they fill, and and that's what I think is beautiful about the NHL playoffs is how they're put into the, each seating. Uh, and th- this is one that I think is going to be a really fun matchup to watch. I just don't have high expectations for whoever wins this matchup, but uh, a, a really a really fun one. But like I said, it, it'd be kind of neat if this is if this does happen to be. Uh, the the battle of the dark horse. This is def. It will definitely be a big battle of the dark mm-hmm. horse. But I mean, also listening off a couple of different names. I I may have heard you miss them, but there's two particular names that stick out to me when you talk about the Carolina Hurricanes. Now, Brett Burns and Jake Getzel. Yeah, these two. I, I wasn't thinking about those Jake Getzel. two guys mm-hmm. on the same roster. That's to me a dynamic duo from yeah. what you can think. Obviously, Brett Burns and his reputation for what he's done. If you even don't know who I'm talking about, but for Brett Burns, just type in the name Brent Burns, and you will definitely know. I know we were all talking before we went live and everything, but, I mean, this was definitely one of those things to where if you get in a costume contest or a dress-up competition, Brett Burns is going to beat you by a mile. I mean, if you literally see what he – if if he – if what he does for the dressing room, for before he even walk into the locker room on the game – you might as well just give him the MVP right now. But, I mean, Jay Getzel, obviously coming from Pittsburgh now to Carolina, his new home, he's definitely sat in well with, with the Hurricanes. It's definitely been – It was. I'm not going to lie, this is one of those situations to where I thought it may take at least like a week or two to, to get the feet rolling with Carolina. But, no, Jay Getzel was just getting in right from the get-go day one. It was just right then and there. It's almost kind of like another version when he was with Pittsburgh. I mean, first game, first shift, first shot. Back in the net. I mean, what more can you ask for off of Jake Getzel's reputation? But obviously not going to the Islanders, talking about Horvat, then what mm-hmm. else everyone can talk about for the Islanders. They can they can definitely be one of those sneaky good teams that can really surprise you. I mean, everyone thinks of, when you talk about New York, obviously everyone thinks of the Rangers and those type of situations, but this is another team that really surprises you a lot when it comes down to playoff time, and if they're in this situation, they can really make you think twice about their their style of play. They're not afraid to get nitty and gritty. They're not afraid to send their D down, pension under the boards. Then Even their wingers, obviously, are not afraid to, to try and puck battle down below the crease. This is a team that will play lights out a full 60 minutes, and they will they will put everything that they can, their body out there, to try and physically win that game. And nothing against Carolina Hurricanes, just because they're in the same way. But to me, it just seems like adding Jake Getzel, it just seems like you get a new life with the Carolina Hurricanes. And it just seems like, to me, they... They're now a little bit of a faster-paced pe- faster pace team, and they can definitely get the transition going. And obviously, you know, a lot of the time, they're going to be looking for Jake when he's on the ice. But, Marissa, mm-hmm. I know Jay Getzel and Horvat, obviously two big stars on each team. What do you think this, this series is going to be like? Because I, I sincerely think this, this is going to be another good series. Oh, this is going to be this is going to be a really good series. I mean, this is I think the second time they're meeting. Last year they met as well, and now they're meeting again in the postseason. We obviously didn't talk about Seth. Seth Jarvis as well leads the team for the Canes with 13 power play goals. I obviously I mentioned um, Brock Nelson. There's also Jake Gensel. The Beauty League, two the Beauty Leaguers, um, had the pleasure of meeting both of those guys when I worked a year for the Beauty League. Actually, interviewed Jake. Great guy. Played in Omaha, so he was with Omaha Mavericks, played college here, From also played up in Blaine. So really good hockey guy. I always love to watch him see where he goes. But this is going to be a really interesting match because I think they're both evenly matched. I mean, um, you know, it says here Carolina has won each of the previous two meetings, 4-0 in 2019 and then 4-2 in 2023. So not the consecutive part, but they did. This is the second or third time I think they're meeting, so – a little bit different stats, but they have played how many times? I don't know. I, I see these teams as both really evenly matched, like you said, but I do think that Bo and Brock Nelson tied at 33 goals this this year for the team. So they're going to be two you need to really look out for, but I don't know. I, I think this could go either way. I don't see one team pulling out more than the others. I don't see a, oh, Canes are going to win this or Islanders are going to win this. I think it's going to go until game six, game seven, um, the same thing. But they've just got a lot of good guys. I mean, Seth Jarvis also just – I think he's so funny. Like, I love Seth. I love what he's doing for the game. He jumped on um, 
the fan club podcast, which is like the hockey guys podcast. If you watch them, they're like on social media, hockey guys are great. Love them from Minnesota based. And like, why well, I was listening to one of their podcasts and you just learn a lot about like Seth. And I think he's just a, go- a little bit of a goofy guy, but overall, I think these two teams are going to be really, really impressive. Matthew Barzal leads the team obviously in points for the Islanders. And then you also have Dobson um, with most assists. So I just feel like almost they're both star studded in their own way. But I wouldn't be shocked if maybe Islanders pulled out a little bit and won this one. But I also know how Jake Gensel is. And again, like Seth, and it's just going to be a really even match. Yeah, th- match this up. is probably the toughest one for me. Uh, if, if you're a sports better and you had to pick, uh, this yeah, is one that I, I don't really want to touch. I because I, I, I can, I, I'm, I'm with you. I could see either way. That's that's why I feel like, you know, I don't have high expectations for either of these, either of these mm-hmm. teams. But that's why I feel like this could be a dark horse coming out of this this matchup because yeah. you've got two teams that are battling it out so hard that it might prepare them for that next series and mm-hmm. and that's you've seen that in the past with with certain teams so uh you know and, and it's 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 definitely a weird matchup overall looking at it um but it, I'm, it is i i almost feel like in my gut i want to go with like in my like heart and like in my my cocky mind i want to go with the islanders but there's something about the canes there's yeah. just something about the Canes I can't put my finger on, Jake and Gensel. I feel like they yeah, that's, right. That's I, think pretty much it. I think it's Jake, right? Like I don't, I don't know. I feel like the Canes might come out on top, and I, I, I really do. I think, I think if I would have to put one of the teams of these winning this and going on to the second round, I'd probably have to pick the Canes for some reason. I don't know mm-hmm. why. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. I feel like I should be picking the Canes, but it's just so tight. Uh, yeah, man, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's gonna be a fun one. It's like I said, really I think good. this is gonna, this might be the most exciting single matchup uh, mm-hmm. of two teams that hardly anyone cares about. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> that, yeah. that's, that's one thing. <laughs> that's split. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> but let's go over to the Western Conference, get started over there, uh, and starting off with the Dallas Stars versus the Los Angeles Kings. This is a really fun one, uh, too. And, and, and thinking back to last year with the Dallas Stars, they were by far the most aggressive team in the playoffs, to me, I, I felt like just watching them, watching that that first game or that first series. It was against the Wild, right, last yeah. year, uh, and, and just yeah. how aggressive that entire series went was just nonstop. It was nonstop, one person colliding into the next, uh, and and so I think this is going to be a lot of fun. You saw Joe Pavelski go down, and the Stars still were able to prevail in that series. That was uh, no offense to your Wild, uh, you know, because I was rooting for the Wild, but Ugh. that was that was by far one of the most exciting overall series to watch as Without just a, a hockey fan with no bias Absolutely. in the match. Uh, and, and it was really fun. I, I was, I was cheering a little more for, for the while, but was it, was it Dumba that had that dirty hit on Pavelski? Is, is that, uh, Max Dumba? Was that Matt right? Dumba? Yeah. Is Matt that Dumba? Yeah. 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 I think, that's um, what I'm thinking of. I think Dumba, I think I did. I blocked a lot of the Dallas stars versus wild series out of my mind last year because it like quite Smart. literally made me want to like, die cry. on the inside watching that cry die especially that's, you know, that's what made me stars. Swing. like i was like <sighs> that's what made me kind of swing for for dallas I was like man you just now lost your your veteran player and joe pavelski he goes down and he's 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 the glue that holds the team together he absolutely is and you saw that whenever he was off the ice in that that game uh, and then bouncing back and being able to win it it was it was exciting plus you get the far north against the far south but now you've got Los Angeles, all the way out there on the on the West Coast, uh, you know. And then you've got Dallas, so you've got uh, two teams. I mean, again, two teams who've been solid all season. Uh, these are two teams that have have hopes for the playoffs. So again, planning for the playoffs pretty early in the season, knowing that you're going to most likely get there as long as you keep on playing your game. You don't have to go out of the way too much. Uh, and and I think overall, too, I think you look at Jason uh, Robertson, leads, leading scorer uh, for, for the, the Stars. I think that's going to be a key player in this matchup, looking at him. Uh, and then, of course, the, the, the matchup between him and, and uh, Cam, 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 Cam Talbot, Cam's uh, you know, and, and the goal, yeah. as, a, as a goaltender. So, I mean, watching, watching that matchup, I think, is going to be a, a fun one because you've got a, a, a high-scoring uh, guy going against, uh, going against a, a goaltender who – has been been in the league long enough to to know who to, who to pick up and who to who to watch, uh, and so you know just just looking at that, and then of course you go over to the, the Kings. I mean they're they're mm-hmm. s- they're studded, uh, you know the Ryan Suter, uh, and, and you, on top of that, one thing that that Jeremy and I bring up every once in a while is uh, it should be illegal 
to have the chrome helmets. It's distracting to me watching it on TV, and Ugh. I, I know it has to be distracting on the ice. You don't like so, to have fun. Well, the chrome please, helmets no, just, are so sick. You don't I, like I, to have fun. Dog. I hate the chrome helmets. You can do it some other way. How about you don't have boring black and white colors like the Raiders? Uh, you know, that's just what when you're when you're planning a team you're sitting there twiddling your thumbs and you're thinking all right guys we got we got it we're going to be the kings you could have thrown some gold in there you could have you could have thrown some purple in there for royalty but instead you said let's go with black and white and then now we have nothing better to do than to blind the other team by putting a mirror on our head and saying this is good enough this is the best we could do it looks cool sure but Put a little bit of chrome in there, not the entire helmet. You're blinding me. I can't oh, focus I on the puck. I, I'm seeing four of the puck because it's just shining all over the place. I um, literally love the chrome helmets. I think they're so <laughs> sick. Like, I'm so for the chrome helmets. My least favorite so helmets pretty. in all sports I can't are those get chrome behind helmets. That. I can't get behind that. Oh, See, uh, I love look it. over at the the Oregon Ducks have a, cr a chrome helmet where uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's the white with the chrome on it. That's the way to do it. I don't like the Oregon, Oregon Ducks, all chrome helmets, but theirs aren't so shiny and so buffed out where you can literally look at it and check your makeup in it. I mean, it's, it's, Can't focus. it's he's like, too much. Yeah, I'm, I'm, he's I'm, literally I'm, like an ADHD child where he's like, exactly. shapes and colors. Yeah, yeah shapes like, and colors. well, I'm, I'm staring at the screen and all of a sudden, ah, I got blinded. Ah, <laughs> let me look, look back at the game. Ah, I got to change the channel. I'm getting oh. epilepsy trying to watch it. Oh, my God. But yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> they're, they're cool. I'll give them that. But don't wear them on the ice, man. Oh my and and God, come up with so come up with a color scheme for goodness sakes. I'm <sighs> <laughs> okay. Let me try. Let me two try. high two high scoring teams, dude. Uh, that was another thing yeah. I wanted to throw out let there me, before. Let ranting. me try and compose myself because that was truly fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, you talk about the Dallas Stars and the LA Kings. I mean, outside of Josh Randon Raven, about two. Their chrome domes is what I love to say. I mean, I, I sincerely love those helmets. To me, they're absolutely fantastic. But, I mean, if, if you talk about the Dallas Stars, my big thing is you need to stay with their momentum. The Dallas Stars are such a fast team. It is truly mesmerizing. They honestly remind me of another version of Colorado with how fast they can go on the ice. I mean, <clears throat> obviously, Josh. I like that comp. Huh? I like that comp. Yeah, I mean, you, you literally compare those two teams for speed-wise. They're definitely, I sincerely think they're right identical with each other. But, I mean, you talk about obviously the roster, obviously Robertson, Sagan, Ottinger, Wyatt Johnston. I mean, you can just literally go off with what they have for – uh, for an entire team, this is definitely a team that is definitely not having the problem to click. And they're even Jamie Ben. I can't forget Jamie Ben. I mean, yeah, if, I you forget, if, you, if you forget Jamie Ben, then you're not a true <laughs> Dallas Stars fan. I'm not even a <laughs> Dallas Stars fan, but obviously, with what Dallas has been able to do, and I will admit, they may not be a chrome dome like what Josh loves with the LA Kings, but I'm going to admit it. They're black. All black and green Dallas Stars jersey. Those things. Uh, the bright green? Yes. Yeah. Those See things. <laughs> I wish I can get behind them, but I really can't. Plot twist, everybody. I, at first, I'm like, they're okay. But hey, then, bright, bright green is at least a color. That's, that's what I got to get. <laughs> hey, them. yeah, they may be a color, but, I mean, it, it's it's definitely something. But, obviously, going now to the LA Kings, obviously can't forget Kopitar. Then we're yeah. all we're obviously used to the LA Kings with Jonathan Quick in the net. But now, obviously, yeah. we're past that. I mean, Jonathan Quick is definitely striving off in a new in a new team. But with the LA Kings, it just seems like, to me, Outside of their chrome domes, I mean, if if you really if you're really gonna get blinded by it, at least be like Andre Kopitar, have the dark black visor and just try and block it out for crying out loud. La La, they've been on the they've been on the rise, obviously, but to me, it just seems like if you get in a track race with Dallas, you're gonna be in a world of hurt here. Dallas to me is the team that you would not want to get in a track competition with just because they're so fast in their transition game and their puck management on the power play on the penalty kill is is really up there, if not on the top five, obviously, for these teams that are coming into the postseason. They know what it takes to light the lamp and they know what it takes to get the penalty kill going and they just feed off of that energy and they can just get the momentum going and they can find a way to get the dubs on the board. But Marissa, I know 
you tried to do the same comparison as me and try to get your composure together behind the chrome dumps for what Josh loves to hear. <laughs> and give me your thoughts on the Dallas LA series. You know, if there's no Dallas Stars haters, I'm dead. I'm dead. That's that's all I have to say. If there's no haters of the Dallas Stars, I'm dead. I can, I can, I cannot. It's, and it pains me to talk about them in this way because, like, quite literally, that is, like, a new rivalry almost, in my opinion. I think that's one of the big, biggest Minnesota Wild rivalries. Like, obviously, we have Colorado, but, like, Dallas Stars is turning into a very new and big rivalry. So, I just hate them with my entire heart and soul. But, obviously, like you said, they're – they've they waxed us this year like they every time we played dallas we we just got absolutely pummeled and destroyed and it was like again one of those things where I, when i watched it in the wild oh we're not good this year obviously they didn't make the playoffs but like whenever i watched them play i was like please like white flag like please make it stop because it was again and again and again and again and again they are so fast they are so quick you can't when they have the puck it's almost always a lot of possession and like your their zone like their offensive zone than the opposing team's defensive zone and it you can't ever catch a break from them and once they have one goal they will continue to go and go and go and that's what they've been doing really well is they never give you time to really recover and that's one of the things that is hard about obviously like the Dallas Stars also yeah. another former Minnesota Wild guy on there Sam Steele boo tomato tomato <laughs> tomato 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 how dare you how dare you but and then obviously Jay, um, Jake Otterton, Lakeville native, as we know, born and raised. You're welcome for that, Dallas Stars. But going up against them and the Kings, which also another Kevin Fiala, I'm also okay with that because we got the future Calder winner from that trade, Brock Faber. Brock Faber. So that one was like, hey, yeah. We get something out of it. We, got, we won that trade. You can have Fiala, even though I like it sucks. I, like, I just like looking at him. He was pretty. <laughs> um, but you know, we won that trade, but I just don't think this is a matchup. I, I really don't. I think, especially cause obviously we won against the Kings. Um, the wild actually played hockey and they played a game and they looked good. And I was like, Whoa, wait this year, where was this team? Literally like a couple days ago. Yeah. They played the Kings. Will we'll Ferrell was, what, was in the net. Monday? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know Minnesota was still that, played hockey. Up Sunday there. or Monday. Yeah. That, they're still playing. Unfortunately. I mean, one more game and then, then we're over. I still have to watch them, but like, it, it, it felt like they gave up. Like what was that? Two weeks in whenever they fire the coach. Yeah. And yeah. They fired D this, this season for the Minnesota wild has been like one of the most crazy gut wrenching. like, like quite literally the craziest season I think I've ever experienced. Because it, it, we, it has we been. Fire our head coach. We get John Hines. We have injury. We have trades. We have this, we have that. We're trying to, figure out we can't the Minnesota figure it Wild out. didn't I mean, even know what they were doing nobody knew what the what Minnesota Wild were doing no. I had never knew what the, the state Minnesota of Minnesota Wild didn't know and then you get Marat Kustinov 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 yeah there you go Kustinov it's, it's hard the tongue I, twister I, I, I call him Cusco because it's just easier see like, we go, I don't know why put it we go Cusco. from we were just talking about UFC where we we sit there and butcher names left and right now we're talking hockey and all the, the crazy hockey names uh, I, so I've been I've been trying cool. to keep a lot of the difficult names out of my mouth tonight because i know i'm just gonna butcher them but yeah i mean it's it's a it's a fun matchup i'm I'm right there with you though i just feel like the dallas stars have been just on fire pretty much all season Mm -hmm. i mean they're just in a i think where they sit uh they're just in a tough spot where it's hard for them to get a better seating than what they got Uh, so you know it's I, i i i think dallas has this one pretty easily i see this one probably going to game five i have a hard time picking a sweep on any game uh, yeah, just, I, I don't if know. There's, if there's a sweep to pick, I think it's this one. I'm going to yeah, be honest. Yeah, if, 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 there, if there's if one there's to, pick. to pick. Yeah, just because also, like, and it hates, pains me to say that because I hate Ryan Suter with my entire heart and soul. Like, and, boo! And every another, time reason, another reason why I'll probably go with, with five games in this one is just because you look at both teams and how they performed. Mm-hmm. Comparing to their, their overall record, their home record uh, for both of them has been outstanding. Uh, and so that's that's one thing that I think with these two teams I think can play a big part into it is is for one how how far the travel is back and forth and having that home home ice advantage I think that's going to be uh, something to look at for sure. Mm-hmm. But uh, let's go ahead and jump on to the next one. We've got Colorado Avalanche against the Winnipeg Jets. This is a very fun one just because I'm very excited to watch what Kale McCarr and the Avs can do. Uh, you know, it's I, I, Kale McCarr. I, I don't care who you root for. I don't care what what team you're a fan of, he's one of the most exciting players to watch in the NHL in recent history. Uh, you know, just from the day he stepped on the ice in the NHL, extremely fun to watch. Uh, I 
I, I, I just seeing how he moves around as a defenseman too, uh, and, and seeing everything that he does. And then of course you've got guys like uh, Nate, Nate McKinnon and uh, you know Mika and uh, let's see Miko Rantanen. Yeah, see there, <laughs> there I am butchering names already trying to remember. Um, you know just everything that they've got on the ice. It's it's a fun team to watch, and the Avalanche to me is a hard team to root against. Uh, just because of how lovable they are, and unlike their their underdog story to win the the, the cup a few years back, uh, and and just seeing everything that they've got, and you know looking over the Jets uh, personally, this is another one to me that I I don't see the Jets coming out alive. Uh, again, I'll pick a five game just because I'm never going to pick a sweep. It, it kind of feels insane to me to pick sweeps, even though I feel like last year we saw several. Um, but you know I guess most of them coming from the Panthers, but. I'm not going to pick a sweep. I feel like the Avs have this in five. I think that they're they're pretty confident going into the playoffs right now. They they're familiar with the with the the playoffs. They're the more physical team. Uh, just, just looking at this matchup overall, I feel like the Avalanche have a pretty pretty. Uh, I won't say easy matchup because it's in the NHL playoffs. It's the Stanley Cup playoffs. Everyone's fighting for the same goal. But I've got the Avs winning this one pretty easily. It wouldn't be surprising, honestly. This is like I said about Dallas. This is the only team that can that can sincerely think that they can outskate the Dallas Stars as a Colorado Aval- Avalanche. Yeah. I mean, obviously, listen off the roster, you got some guy named Nathan McKinnon, some guy named Kale McCarr, Nishkinen, Mika Ranson, and then even going to your little humble abode up in Minnesota, some guy named Zach Parisi. I mean, you get you get all these guys that can just literally fly up the ice, and of course, the guy, the defenseman has the dirtiest ankles, Kale McCarr. I mean, hands down, dirtiest ankles on the blue line. The Kale McCarr will literally make you look stupid with what he can do on the blue line. And obviously, Kale McCarr is definitely one of those two-way players that he can play obvious on the blue line, and he's not afraid to skate down into the winger position. I mean, obviously, his natural position is a defenseman, but it just seems like with how his skating ability and his puck handling skills, he's just that kind of guy that will just do whatever it takes to get that puck in the back of the net. And... Colorado, nothing against the Winnipeg Jets, obviously. Um, all you just see, to me at least, is, is Hollabuck and um, Monaghan. They, they, they're a decent team, but I'm sorry. I'm going to make this short and sweet. Colorado is – I'm not trying to sound cocky. Colorado, to me, has us in the bag, I sincerely think. And, I mean, Marissa, I don't know if you're all on the same lines as me, but I – I don't see it being really far for the Winnipeg Jets for what they got to go against for the Colorado Avalanche. This is another matchup where I hate more than my entire life and soul is because it's two of the rivals too as well. Another like wild rival I didn't mention is the Winnipeg Jets, which is new. That is a new rival as well. Um, don't like the Jets. Colorado is always going to be a rival to us. Um, I think a lot of people underestimate the Jets. And especially with this this matchup, I don't think it's going to be easy. I don't think it's going to be a sweep because they just played. Let's look up the last time they played. Oh, these two teams played Saturday, April 13th. Which team won? Not the Avs. No. And and it was a big margin. It was seven to nothing. I was hoping you wouldn't say that. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, no, you're you're gonna you're gonna think I'm not gonna like it's seven nothing though. But Winnipeg Jets, they didn't just be like win by one. They won. They by shut six. out Colorado. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people underestimate. And again, and the only reason I say this is because the Minnesota Wild have played the Jets. We played them this year, and they are hard. They are very fast. They are very physical. They're very aggressive. We couldn't like you know that like sound. It's like we cannot beat. These motherfuckers. Like, that's exactly <laughs> how I felt. Like, we what? cannot beat these mother. Like, every single time we played the Jets, we thought we could. We could not beat them because they're just that good. You obviously have Logan Stanley, who should not be able to play in the NHL. Period. End of discussion. He Thank is you. not. Logan Stanley is one of the dirtiest players I have ever seen play the game. He yeah. should not be able to play because he obviously injured Kirill last year. He has injured him almost, I think, actually twice. And he is just the just the dirtiest player. He doesn't matter who he like gets like who he hurts, what he does, he does not care. He's out for blood, and that's not. I get you're playing a game, but like 
that shouldn't be your main thing. I just don't like Logan Stanley, first off. Uh, Nate Schmidt met him, the beauty league guy. Love him, interviewed him. Uh, you have Neil Pionk. Some of these guys who, again, like... Neil Pionk, think, another, another Sioux City Musketeer player. Yep, exactly. Like, a lot of these guys who I think do a little bit get overlooked and because it's the Jets, but they're dangerous. And you can take yeah. it from me personally. They're a dangerous, dangerous squad. Do not underestimate them. I do not. I I get it. I get Kale McCarr. I get Nathan McKinnon. I get the the stacked. I get how good Colorado is. Um, but with recent events, them literally like well, and, what four and, days ago. Yeah, and, and you're right too because uh, you know we're we're gonna talk about the Canucks next and 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 talking about the the Jets and Canucks, two very similar teams. When you just, I I don't picture either of them at the top of the standings. You know they're just mm-hmm. not that team. Uh, but this year they are, and so that's that's definitely something I'm. I probably am overlooking them quite a bit. Uh, I just, and, and it's it's also probably that that recency bias looking at mm-hmm. the the abs and seeing everything that they've done in recent years and again all the, all the talent that they have, and it's not just the talent because I think you you take a couple of those guys away and put them somewhere else and I don't think they shine the way that they do with Colorado because of the chemistry again something that is so difficult to do in hockey is finding the correct chemistry and, and Colorado has it Colorado has it down almost perfectly tuned. Uh, it's 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 a well-oiled machine, but you're right. The, the Jets are that sneaky good team. Mm-hmm. I'm still sticking with, with my gut and saying that the Avs pull this one out pretty, uh, I, again, I won't say easily, but fluently. Uh, I, I they think know that big that big loss to the Winnipeg Jets is be- lingering in the back of their mind when they go yeah. to playoff time. So yeah, for sure. There's definitely going to be some revenge. That's definitely going to be bright. That's going to be biting back against these two teams. But let's go ahead and move on to the next one. We've got the Vancouver Canucks against Nashville Predators. Uh, man, when you again, when you look at these two teams, it, these are two teams I wouldn't have expected to make the playoffs, let alone the Canucks being one of the best teams in the NHL right now. What the heck is happening? Am I in the twilight zone? Um, because I didn't even know that the Canucks were still in, in the league. Th- this is this is crazy to me to see the Canucks this much on fire. You know this this hot into this part of the season because we talked about them in the in the midway th- midway through the season. We talked about the Canucks. And it was one of those teams. Yeah, they're really hot, and they're surprising everybody. They're going to cool down. They're not. They're not going to stay at the top of the standings. They're not going to. They're not going to be that team to beat. They're at the top of the standings, and they are that team to beat. That's what's so crazy about this Canucks team. Uh, and then again, the Predators. Predators are, are another team that have really struggled in recent uh, recent history. And looking back at, at last year and, and the year before, uh, and and just seeing what they've gone through. Now this year. Getting their way up up into the into the playoffs the way that they have, uh, this is this is a game where I I think it's uh, the the matchup I think is easy for me to pick the Canucks mm-hmm. just because of who they've mm-hmm. been all season long. But again, you've got a Predators team who it, it had a hard time securing their spot in the playoffs, uh, so you don't count them out. Um, you know, so this this is another another matchup uh, again, Jeremy, that I think is is going to be a really fun one when you, when you look at these two teams. Uh, and and I'm going to be honest, I haven't watched a whole lot of the Canucks because I didn't expect them to be this good this far into the season. <laughs> I'm going to be completely honest with you. I'm almost in the same boat as you. I, don't get me wrong. I'll click on, on hockey any night of the week. I will watch hockey, hockey, back to back to back. I don't care who's playing. But Vancouver has definitely been one of those teams where I haven't watched a whole bunch of. But mm-hmm. obviously, you look at the roster. I mean, obviously, with Quinn Hughes, the Elias Patterson, the Ellis, Eli, Elias Lindholm, excuse me. I mean... These guys, they can definitely put on a show. I mean, obviously, if you have the last name Hughes, you're definitely going to be already <laughs> being talked about. I mean, it was definitely a monumental thing when the Hughes brothers got to play against each other, and that will be something that everybody will never forget. It was monumental in that aspect. But obviously now looking to, obviously, the, Canu- the Canucks playing the Predators, the Predators have definitely came alive this tail end of the season. And obviously, this is when it matters the most. Like, don't get me wrong, it matters the most in the entire season. But mm-hmm. this is the last time that you need to get down to the nitty-gritty. And obviously, Roman Yossi has definitely been doing a lot. Then um, Rock Barros, he's definitely been doing really well. Then the National Predators, my, my only thing is, if you're going to be competing against the strong Vancouver Connect team, you have to play a full game here. You can't just try and scrape the bottom of the barrel and get the nitty-gritty into this type of situation just because this Vancouver team, with how hot they have been, they are going to be on all gears and all gas, no brakes. They will literally spin circles around you, and 
any Canada team, they can literally dominate. And nothing against, like, obviously us down here in the States, but, I mean, Canada, this is – that's literally, like, they're – obviously, if, you have, if you're not a hockey fan, that's their thing here. I mean, yeah. can, Vancouver Canucks, they have definitely been shining, obviously, all season, and which is really, obviously, a big surprise for a lot of fans like Josh and, obviously, we were talking before the show. When was the last time we've heard a lot about Vancouver – I mean, we're used to hearing, obviously, about Toronto and Edmonton and even Calgary. But, obviously, for the Vancouver Canucks this year, they, they kicked the door open and said, hey, we're here too. Don't forget about us. But, Marissa, I know, like I said, Nashville's been on a tear the last couple of weeks. Then, otherwise, this entire season has been kind of tough for them. So, give me your opinion and thoughts on how you think this series is going to go. Well, you've got Ryan O'Reilly, you've got Gustav Nyquist, you've got Jason Zucker, you've got some Minnesota boys in there. Obviously, Gustav played with the Wild last season in the tail end. We, um, he was coming off his shoulder industry and then came on in. Um, Jason played a lot of years with the Minnesota Wild. Um, yeah, I mean, they they came pretty much alive, in, like you said, in the last half of the season and what you need to do. But when you're going up against the Canucks with Quinn Hughes and also Brock Besser – Brock yeah. Bester, yeah. Minnesota boy, baby, uh, Burnsville native. I mean, he's he's electric. But I I just think that the Canucks have been that again. Like it's kind of like almost like the Rangers. Like the Canucks have been that team all year, yeah. and they played to the identity. Like I went to the Canucks versus Minnesota Wild game this year, where actually we won in a shutout, not a shutout, a shootout. By the way. That was sick to see. It was at the XL Energy Center. Uh, we beat the Canucks in a shootout and then silenced Brock Besser and Quinn Hughes. So that was really fun. But I do think they're um, – the Canucks – I'm not going to say you can't beat. I'm not there. I don't think they're an unbeatable team. I think they're very, very good, and they've shown that all year. But I also think that Nashville <laughs> getting hot to when they are, if they do – like you said, if they play a full 60 minutes, they have a shot. But you have they have to get out first. They got to get pucks on net. They've got to maintain that zone possession as much as possible. They have got to limit chances, block shots. It's got to almost be like a perfect recipe every single night if they want to, if the Predators want to make it out alive of this series. Because that's what you have to be against a team like the Canucks. You have to be virtually beautiful from everything from the penalty kill to the power play to the special teams to the goaltending you know if you like the predators have to be on on a hundred percent their best game if they want to escape this series and i just don't know if they have it in them they have some skillful players but at the same time i just don't know if this nashville predators squad can do it especially against Quinn Hughes like have you seen the like the the, him in the like the box the penalty box he's like I'm off them like he's like in the zone half the time looks like he's gonna kill somebody so (laughs) this one feels a lot like the Bruins against Panthers last year to me where yeah if you're gonna do it you're gonna have to push it to game seven and really grind for every minute of every game to barely pull out the win Mm -hmm. uh and and another thing too I'm pretty sure Thatcher Demko he's he's fully healthy right yeah he's so Mm -hmm. yeah and so so seeing him between the pipes, I feel like, uh, yeah, the Canucks are just one of those teams really neck and neck with the Rangers this year for who's going to be the best best team in the regular season. Um, but it doesn't matter so much who's the best in the regular season. It comes down to postseason. But let's go to the last mm-hmm. matchup. We've got the Edmonton Oilers against the Vegas Golden Knights. you got the reigning champs. Again, you talk about matchups and where they fall. This one is a really fun one when you, when you look at what the Oilers did. Again, another team who got rid of their coach midseason. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and then now you've got the Golden Knights who you could tell there was a little bit of a hangover with them, um, but then also losing a little bit of talent, not bringing everybody back. Uh, you know, So I, I, there's there's so much that into this game where, where you, you look at it. Uh, uh, Cody Secchi, uh, K- Ketchy, how do you say his last name? Do you know? For who? Uh, for, for the Oilers. Uh, and then uh, you know, you've, you've, uh, you, you've got uh, Connor McDavid. I almost wanted to say mm-hmm. Bedard. Uh, you know, you've, you've got <laughs> – Oh, God. You know, because I, I I get the two mixed up, especially now with all the comparisons uh, mm-hmm. and Zach Hyman. Uh, you know, you, you look at the Oilers and and what they've got, but you're going against again the reigning champs, the guys who who know that they can get there. They know they've been there, uh, and and I just I, I look at this matchup. I think this is going to be another really tight one for sure. Game six, seven kind of feel to it, just because it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be guys skating all over. It's it's really going to be a battle of the blue lines who can who can get into the the other attacking zone. 
and put the most pressure on, on the opposing team. One thing that I've seen with the, the Golden Knights that I feel like they keep on playing this way, even backing up to last season in the playoffs, uh, what, what they've been known for is kind of keeping the, the keeping uh, all of their energy saved up for that last half of the game and really just firing on all cylinders and coming out with everything that you've got. Uh, and then, uh, again, I think special teams is going to play into it a lot here. Who can, who can kill off the penalties? Who can score on penalties? The Oilers haven't been as good as they were last year. When you talk about the 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 uh, the, the unit going out there, uh, I, I just their their special teams as a whole haven't been as good as they were last year. Um, but they're they're still very fluent in the way that they circle around the net uh, and and find ways on power plays uh, to be able to go down there and score. So I think there's a lot that plays into this one, which is why again I I see this one this one feels like a, a definite game six game seven uh, to me and a, a very tough one for either team uh, that's going to have to grind it out. I'm going to be honest with you. This is going to be another one of those games to where if you get caught in a track and field race for either team, yeah. you're going to be you're going to be in for a world of hurt. I mean, obviously looking at the the Vegas Golden Knights for Ike's Hill, um Tomas Hurdle, uh Jonathan Marchessault, um, William Carlson, the list just keeps going on and on and on. Then obviously for the Edmonton Oilers, of course, you can't forget that guy named Connor McDavid. Then Evander Kane, and just it's another one of those situations where both rosters, the list just goes on and on and on just because both of these teams have tremendous talent. Like, you look at this kind of a game, this could – like, obviously, I know that this wouldn't happen because of how the bracket formats. This could easily be one of those Stanley Cup Finals games. Like, you yeah. have to play yeah. in that kind of aspect just because this is literally what you're going to have to endure no matter whether you're on the Vegas Golden Knights or the Edmonton Oilers here. Both of these teams are absolutely fast, and they can definitely find a way to put the puck in the back of the net. Aiden Hill obviously has been an electric goalie for the Vegas Golden Knights, and he just keeps finding those ways to make those unbelievable saves. I'm going to be honest with you. I know he's nothing. I shouldn't say he's nothing, but he gives me kind of like those Mark andre Fleury vibes just because how he does it and – the way, obviously, I know between Aiden Hill and when Mark Andre Furry played for the Golden Knights, I know there was a lot of talk between those two. Obviously, you you know as much as I do, Marissa. For for goalies, there and every member on a hockey team, everybody's a big family and all brothers. And this is definitely a situation to where. Aiden Hill has been looking a lot up to Mark Andre Fleury and what obviously he did for the Vegas Golden Knights and all those unbelievable saves, and he's just trying to match and even come relatively close to Mark Andre Fleury's repertoire. And nothing against the Edmonton Oilers, just because if you can find a way to stop Connor McDavid and his speed, I don't know if you have to take his blades off or if you have to make him dull. <laughs> and this is a situation to where we've all obviously seen Connor McDavid just all of a sudden look like he's just standing still, and the next thing you know, he's completely down the far side of the blue line. This is definitely going to be one of those things to where between him and Evander Kane, they're going to be obviously clicking, and the entire roster for both of these teams are going to be clicking. But, Marissa, like I said, this is going to be like a Stanley Cup vibe, and what do you think of this series and going on? We all know this is, I think, is going to go to a Game 7. Yeah, this is definitely going to hands down go to a Game 7. This is one of the most like the series I'm most excited to watch like this one is just going to be so fun because it's just so star-studded there's so much you know powerful players and so much talent you know and I think one guy we didn't highlight that obviously we need to highlight Leon Dreisaitl like the list can go on and on but Leon Dreisaitl is that's again another component when you have Connor Mm -hmm. McDavid even Stuart Skinner yeah, and, and Stewart's like again, like you you can literally be like boom, 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 boom. These there's so many amazing players on both squads, and that's why this is going to be an amazing, amazing matchup. But it will go to game seven because if Oilers win one, Vegas is gonna fight back. There's not gonna be out of these two teams one that just folds. There's never going to be. They're always going to fight back. Now, who wins out of these? That's going to be hard. That's going to be hard for me to even go with one team because I think both of them have the chance to go very far. No, Vegas obviously won last year and they have set that precedent, but the Oilers have almost like a comeback story, right? Like Big again, time. like it's the same thing like with the Minnesota Wild, like firing their head coach and all of a sudden going on a heater and finding their identity. And that's all that you could ever really want from a team when they fired their coach. Like I wish we would have done this year, obviously. Like they're like, oh, it was the coach. Now we're great. 
versus like who the Minnesota Wild was like it wasn't really the coach was it it just was the fact that we suck like it was just the fact that we can't Facts. play okay. play together as a team which is like we're not good this year which well, really I, I didn't, with, like, I didn't think Minnesota deal. looked as bad as they did after firing the coach too where yeah. Edmonton, Edmonton was one to me was really confusing because like yeah, you've got a, a talented team that. you're not doing bad and they get rid of him. I, I didn't really read into it. Um, but, yeah, you bring that up with their entire comeback season, their, the entirety of their season, having to come back uh, and, and really claw their way to the top of the standings again. I think midway through the season we were looking at them thinking, like, man, they might miss the playoffs because of the, 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 the decisions the decision. they've made. Yeah. Yep. And then now getting up to the, the, where they are, uh, second in the Pacific, uh, just looking on fire – I, I feel for me it's not as difficult to pick a winner, I, although it's mm. although it's going to be a, a, a tough one, and I do think game six, game seven uh, is it's going to be pushed to, into the deeper deeper uh, you know deeper end of the series. But to me, when you look at the point differential and the, the whose defense is more resilient, I lean towards the Oilers. The Oilers just know how to block the lanes. They know how to keep the the the, the foot down on the on the pedal. Well, Mark Stone doesn't hear you say that. I, I mean, <laughs> just looking looking at what their their defense holds, I, I think their defense is strong enough. And of course, like we've been mentioning, two very fast teams. Both teams can mm-hmm. score a lot, but who can hold the other to to yeah. to kind of bundle that that fast and speedy uh, and just resilient offense? Who can bundle? Who can bundle them up and and keep them scoreless for one period? That's that's what I'm looking at, and I think that goes towards the Oilers overall. When you look at the point, points differential, uh, Edmonton Oilers plus 64, where the the Golden Knights are only plus 25 right now. So I mean that's that's just the difference that I think makes that so much you know because of how vastly different the two are. Although I think that the head to head matchup is what makes this one so much more fun and and so much closer. I'm going to be surprised. I, I'm not going to lie. I was just surprised. I thought you were going to say towards the Vegas Golden Knights in this situation yeah. just because, I mean, like I said. I, I want to pick the Golden Knights ever since they came into the league. For one, okay, so we're talking about teams picking picking their mascot and uh, their their colors. Golden Knights, A+. Plus. I love mm-hmm. the color schemes. I love the the jerseys, jerseys that they've put together. Uh, and, and then, you know, the, the, the big old golden, you know, the Knights uh, – helmet that they come out of and everything it, everything that they put together in Vegas plus you bring in a sport, you know a hockey team to Vegas I, I I loved I loved Vegas from the day that they came into the into the league and then the very first year uh, making it all the way to the Stanley Cup and and they then now say, within six within five or <laughs> yes within six right uh, that they, they end up winning one uh, this is a team that's really again just like I, I mentioned with the Aval- avalanche a team that's really hard to hate uh, just because you look at everything that they've done. Plus, mm-hmm. whenever they first started off, they had Max Pacioretty. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and so that, yeah. Was, that was easy for me to for root, to root for him and root for them. But and, and I do. I love the Golden Knights. But when I look at the statistics on, on paper, it just feels like the Oilers have what it takes to be able to pull out that Game 7 win. And, yeah. and, and if, if I'm correct by these matchups, because I, I may have all these matchups completely wrong, because uh, this is just me kind of putting it together because they, I haven't seen an official bracket put everything together. But if, if I'm if I'm correct in this, I believe the Oilers even have the home ice advantage in mm-hmm. Game 7. Uh, so if that is the case, that, that leans a little further towards Edmonton again in, in, that, in that scenario. That would be I'm definitely sure. interesting. I, th- I, since, I think you're right. I think that they do have the advantage, but I mean... I, I know they're higher ranked uh, <clears throat> overall, and uh, they, they've got, let's see... Six more points as well. Okay. So, I mean, they, yeah, they're, they're higher ranked in the Pacific because yeah. uh, they're second, Vancouver, right above them. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just looking overall at, at what the Oilers bring to the table. I feel like that's the team to beat. It's definitely going to be a fun series because I agree. This is definitely going to be the series that I'm probably going to glued to the most just because of the the um, the electricity and everything that both of these teams. And, I'm, and one thing that um, I know you were listing off the great things about the Vegas Golden Knights – Two things that I I can't sincerely forget. One, the banner raising in Vegas. If you haven't had the yeah. opportunity to go and see it, that yeah. is without a doubt, hands down, the best banner raising. Especially being in Vegas. Obviously, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> but I mean, of course, obviously, it is to me. It's another great thing that 
you obviously have a hockey team down in Vegas. I mean, who wouldn't want to watch a hockey game chilling in a hot tub or chilling in a pool? I mean, for crying out loud. Outside, so outside of the sports book, right? You got that, that huge sports book, and then exactly. they got that. They got the pool. Like, that's that's my dream, guys. Yeah, that's absolutely. my dream. Okay, yeah. but I know, obviously, we're going – I'm going to go a little off script here. I want, I want to get you both of you, Marissa and you, Josh, your opinion. Ooh. Obviously, breaking news out in the NHL, Air, the Arizona Coyotes now transforming over to the Salt Lake City yeah. area. Area. Josh, do you think this is going to be a really positive thing? Obviously, I know they would be going where the Utah Jazz play. Yeah. Then mm -hmm. give me your thoughts. Do you think that this is going to be a new beginning and a positive start for um, the former Arizona Coyotes going into the next season, or do you think it's going to be kind of tough for these two? This yeah, team? I, I think this is a, a great move for them. I think they had to get out of Arizona. Looking at them overall, obviously Arizona just wasn't the place for them. It, it just you look and, at their rank; it looks from, like a high school rank. From, yeah, from from players that I've heard too, they've they've got like the worst facilities ever. Mm -hmm. Like you, you go there. I've, I've never been to their arena. I've seen it on TV. I've I've heard heard stories about it, uh, and and I haven't heard good things about that. Arizona wasn't the place for him, uh, and now bringing him, bringing him up somewhere where you've got money. Uh, we were talking about the possible landing locations, although for, for all of us, Omaha would have been really cool because we could have gone seen him. Uh, we would have had an NHL team right there in Just our backyard. An hour down the road. But, uh, you know, ultimately Omaha, maybe not the, the best location overall um, when, you, when you think of a fan base. That's the biggest thing that's going to bring in revenue. Kansas City was another place. I think that was higher up on the list than Omaha. Mm -hmm. You talk about fan base, Kansas City's going to rally around you. Uh, Kansas City's a, a crazy fan base that is going to cheer for their their sports team. Um, but then Utah, going out to Salt Lake City again, a sports town. They've got they've got another good good sports team there, uh, and uh, adding an, adding a hockey team there. I think you're going to be able to find that. But then also, you know, you've got the arena, you've got uh, so much in there. So ha, <laughs> great. Now the New York Ranger guy <laughs> going back to the Cub, and now it froze on him. But no, Marissa. Yeah, give, over overall, though, I think I think uh, Salt Lake City is a, is a is a good one. Yeah, absolutely. But Marissa, give me your thoughts on the move for going to Arizona now to Salt Lake City. Do you think this is going to be a positive thing in the future, or do you think it's going to be? Uh, I'll get. I'll just let you go. I'm I'm pissed. I'm, no, pissed. I'm, I'm, I'm 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 pissed because Arizona obviously has said time and time again that they don't want hockey there. They didn't want to do that, and that's fine. There was a lot of roadblocks, but I do believe that Arizona in itself loves hockey. I have a lot of friends that live down there. They love going to the games at Mullet Arena. Also, if you think about it, I know that it's small. I know it's a college hockey bar, and I know it only holds 5,000, but that was never the place for them to live forever. It was only True. temporary until they found a stadium to obviously build. And True. But you have to look at it also as another standpoint. That's great for kids. They can see their favorite players up close, and they can actually – be in that moment and have that amazing environment and really just love what the Yotes are doing. I thought it was great because it really builds the community. When you go to certain games, you're going to have to fucking pay. I'm sorry for swearing, but you're going to get pay like four, like 200 bucks to get lower levels or this or that, you know, at Mullet arena, you could get super close and see your role models, your superstars, everybody <coughs> you want to see. Um, the fact that the NHL gave up so easily on the Arizona coyotes makes me really, really sad because the players love it out there, and the people may not, but there are those that section of hockey fans the that rowdies. love it. They do. I mean, you have Paul Bizanet who loved it. You know, the Yotes, the you know, Desert Dogs, people loved that narrative. And mm -hmm. to see that they just gave up on it so easily and there wasn't any even trying with it all now, I know that, that it was a hard franchise because obviously when they were in what, Glendale? Glendale. Before yeah. they were in Glendale, got locked out of the arena. They weren't paying they weren't paying their rent, so they was backed up. They had a lot of debt. They were locked out of the arena. Then they had that made that transition down to Tempe. And then obviously one of their like co-founders was arrested on like felony strangulation charges. And then they have this, and then they tried to build an arena, and then the it was voted down no by the council. And then they tried to do this and tried to do this. So obviously I know that Arizona didn't want them to be there, and that sucks because I do believe that the hockey community wanted it to go. I just think that it was a wasted opportunity. People didn't try hard enough. There wasn't Gary Bettman did not love hockey down there enough. Gary Bettman did not give it his all. Gary Bettman didn't do enough. And there was a locker. There was like a, like a poster thing outside of the locker room with Yotes locker room, basically like saying 
Gary Bettman sucks. We don't like Gary Bettman. Like this and this. Who and this. does and like Gary God, like, Bettman? Though? Like literally, though, who does? He's like obviously. There's a the, reason why he gets booed every time he talks. And as he should. I'm sorry if you are literally going to look at me and tell me that. Oh, yep, we're just going to move. Get him out of Arizona. We're going to move him to Salt Lake City, da, 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 which is fine, whatever, if you want to do that. But I just believe they gave up on Arizona, and I, I wanted to go to a game there so effing badly. I wanted to see Arizona Coyotes play. I love them. They were one of my – like, honestly, like, they were, like, my – second to third favorite team. I loved the Arizona I, I do hope that they don't get rid of too much of their branding because I love their branding. Yeah. Oh, I that's my thing is if they go up to Salt Lake City and then if they actually get rid of and don't, and don't do like the Salt Lake City like coyotes, like and if they don't keep all of that and they just do new, I'm gonna be like, oh so Gary Bedman like just didn't like the like basically yeah basically yeah. do like he gave no F's given. Basically exactly. just do what you see from uh teams I guess like the Raiders is one that I can think yeah. of. Yeah. The, the Ram, like what the Rams did, uh, you know, like they, they didn't change too much other than maybe their color scheme. I don't want them to go that far, though. I, did, I want them to basically keep everything, uh, change it up, mm-hmm. Ch- change up your, your city. That's it. But uh, Marissa, we've, we've had you t- a, a, a total of like two hours now. I apologize for keeping you so long, but no, it's uh, good. I, I've enjoyed talking hockey again. Uh, getting getting I enjoy into some of it that, here that gets the hockey. Yeah, caliber, yeah, because like, yeah. Hey, Jer- yeah, Jeremy and I, Jeremy and I talk hockey outside of the podcast, but it doesn't get brought into the podcast mm-hmm. enough. We only release two episodes a week, and so uh, getting get trying to trying to touch on all sports is difficult. But Marissa, before we close out, uh, tell everybody where they can, where they can find your stuff. Yeah, you can find me um, at Marissa Voss on Twitter and on TikTok. And then on Instagram, it is Voss11. Uh, very active on Twitter and very active on TikTok. Two kind of different things. But I'm more like Minnesota-based, sports-based, funny content. So if you like to laugh and then also join in and commiserating on how bad Minnesota sports is, follow me because there's nothing but pain, but we make it funny. <laughs> Absolutely. Go check her out, Marissa Voss. Again, thank you very much for sticking around with us for so long. Because before we started recording, we were talking about how we sort of knew people that that we were connected somehow. I'm not gonna lie, I just didn't shut up. (laughs) Yeah. So I mean, (laughs) it it was it's 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 been a lot of fun having you on. We'll definitely have to get you on more, especially when we're talking about hockey, because that seems to be your love. Uh, And so, absolutely, thank you very much for coming on. But. For everybody watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can hit that like button as well and comment down below. Let us know who you think will win the Stanley Cup uh, and uh, comment down below. And, of course, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts, give us a five-star review. That's the best way to help us on those platforms. And you can also follow us and engage with us over on social media. We're on X, formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of that fun stuff. We'd love to hear from you guys. Again, thank you so much for supporting the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.